Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the Shure MV7 dynamic microphone from Shure with the Yamaha MG10XU audio mixer. Now for this video, we will not be using the USB mode on the Shure MV7 microphone. We will be using the XLR output from this microphone. In a situation like this, you'd probably be recording a podcast or some other audio source that has multiple inputs and for this purpose you do want to run it through a mixer like the Yamaha MG10XU so you can easily mix everything down into a single stereo mix for your recording, your podcast, or your live stream. Now if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below with current up-to-date pricing at the best online retailers to make sure that you're always getting the best price possible if you are looking to buy anything that you see in this video. Now for the purposes of this video, right now you are listening to the lapel mic that's clipped onto me and the audio mixer is already connected to the computer, set up and powered on, so we can get straight to setting up and connecting the Shure MV7, and then we'll put a note on the screen below when you are in fact listening to the Shure MV7. We'll also put a note down in the description if you are just wanting to quickly listen to this microphone setup combo to make sure that it's right for you. We have a timestamp down below where you can quickly jump to the section of the video where we have this microphone already connected so you can listen to that. So the first thing that you want to do before you set up and connect everything, like I said, this is already set up to the computer and recording, but you want to make sure that you have good mic positioning. Mic positioning is foundational. There's not a lot that the mixer can do if you have poor positioning. A lot of people get mad at me in my videos because it looks like the microphone is really far away, but it is only about four fingers away from my mouth. This is a really good distance from a dynamic microphone like this. If you get closer, you'll notice that it gets really poppy. You hear those plosives, a lot of air coming out of the mouth can rattle the diaphragm of the microphone. And if you get too far back, you're going to notice that you do have to turn up the gain way too much and it'll make the microphone sound like it's really, really sensitive. You're going to notice every little click and clack going on in your studio or recording environment. So about four fingers away or a fist away is a really good mic positioning and you do just want it right off axis. You don't want the microphone right in front of you because then you will be blowing a lot of air in the microphone which doesn't sound great either. So just have it slightly off axis, four fingers away. Next, like I said, we're going to connect the XLR output of this microphone to the audio mixer. We're going to completely ignore the headphone jack and the USB cable. If you are looking to monitor this microphone, you would have to plug your headphones into the audio mixer because this headphone jack on the back of the microphone is not powered when you use the XLR output like we're using in this video. So we can connect this XLR cable to the back of the microphone and we'll plug it into channel one. Now before we turn any dials or knobs on this audio mixer, let's quickly look and make sure that it's fully reset. All the buttons should be in the up position here at the top. All the gain should be turned down. The compressor should be turned down. The EQ should be up in the 12 o'clock position here. The pan or the FX send should be turned all the way down. The pan should be straight up and all the levels should be down. We're gonna start by turning the stereo level knob up to that triangle zero or unity position there. That'll make sure that whatever we set up on this channel goes right through without being modified to our mix. For the purposes of this video, the stereo level here doesn't have any impact on the USB output, but what it does do is it wakes up the meter here so you can see exactly what you're doing. So just leave that right on that triangle position there. All right, next we're gonna set up the first channel strip on this audio mixer. If you're new to audio mixers, everything works in vertical lines on an audio mixer. So for this first microphone here, we're only gonna be dealing with the first channel strip, but if you do have multiple microphones, the same principles apply as you move down the mixer. Now the first thing that we wanna do if we are recording a podcast or doing a live stream, we wanna turn this level knob all the way up to that triangle zero or unity position, just like we did with the stereo level knob. What this does is it will make sure that whatever gain setting that we set up here on this channel strip goes straight through unmodified to our stereo mix. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to increase the gain to properly set up the gain so you can hear this microphone uh, before we modify it with things like EQ or compression. 
So we're going to turn the gain knob up here to about the 75% uh, position here. So what the gain knob does is it increases the gain on the preamp to bring this tiny microphone level signal coming from the Shure MV7 and it boosts it to something that would be a lot more appropriate for recording. Now you can see here that as I increase the gain that this meter is coming up to about minus six. We want to keep increasing this and right until we hit zero. You'll notice if I pull up the meter here in Logic where I'm recording that when it hits zero on the Yamaha MG10XU, it's really coming in at minus 12 on the computer. What this means is when it hits the peak position on the Yamaha MG10XU, it would also peak on the recording because we would hit zero dB. So there's a 12 dB offset here, but this is by design. By coming in at minus 12, it leaves plenty of room for dynamics. When you do record with a setup like this, you often want your peak level to be somewhere between minus 18 and minus 12. So by setting up your gain to hit zero on the audio mixer here, you've built in that 12 dB buffer or headroom as some people like to call it to make sure that you are protected if you laugh in the microphone during a podcast. Podcast. Podcasts have a real tendency to be really animated and dynamic, and this would protect you to make sure that you don't cl clip or peak. Just so you can hear how horrible it sounds if you do clip, I'm going to turn this preamp and level up all the way, and here you can hear just how horrible it sounds when you are peaking and clipping. It's really digital, really distorted, and it just sounds horrible, and you can see here that you do see a red light on the channel strip, which will let you know that you are peaking. I'm going to bring it back the way we had it. And now you can see that our level is back to that minus 12 position here on the recording. I'm just going to boost this up just a little bit to get right back where we were. So now that we have the gain properly set up, we know that we have the right level. So let's talk about all the other options that we have in this channel strip. Right at the top here, you do have an option for a 26 dB pad. This is really useful for if you're in a situation, if your gain is turned all the way down and you're still peaking or clipping, you will never run into that with this microphone. So that pad button should be in the up position. If you're finding that this microphone is just way too quiet and the gain is all the way cranked and the level is all the way cranked, there's a really good chance that you accidentally have the pad button turned on. Next, we have this HPF button. This is known as a high pass filter, HPF, high pass filter. And what this does is if we click it on, It'll roll off everything below 80 hertz, and it basically takes this microphone out of the subwoofer of your listener of your recording. Gets rid of a little bit of that mud. There really aren't many useful frequencies below 80 hertz from the vocal range. So for me, if I'm ever recording or dealing with live vocals or recorded vocals, I will always turn on the HPF button, that high pass filter, to clean it up just a little bit. Next, Yamaha has a one-knob compressor here for the first two channels. The Yamaha one-knob compressor works a little bit different than other brands. What it does is it will actually add a little bit of gain, and then it will have a dynamic compression ratio and threshold. So the threshold will reduce, and so will the compression ratio, and it will also add gain. Basically what this does is it makes your quieter moments a little bit louder and it makes your louder, more dynamic moments. We talked before about how podcast recording, what this microphone is meant to do, are often dynamic and they can be hard to mix. If you find that you're mixing the knob all the time as people get louder and quieter, then you may want to put in a compressor. Now if you do over compress, it will take all the life out of what you're doing and it may make you sound a little blocky or chunky. So use it sparingly. For me, I generally have it up to about a third of the way, somewhere like that, between a third and a half, depending on what I'm doing. On the Yamaha here, lately I've been leaning more towards between a quarter and a third. So don't go up above 50%. It does make it sound really flat all of a sudden. Next, we have the three band EQ. This is a really good way to kind of tone the microphone if you do have frequencies that are a little bit grating or annoying or need a boost. If you turn the high up a little bit, you'll notice that it gets quite a bit more sharp. But if your guest has a lisp or more sibilant or some of those higher frequencies, the S's are really pronounced, you may want to turn this down a little bit. 
if you do want a little bit more clarity, the main clarity of your vocal is somewhere between 1.5 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz. So by boosting this low here, or this mid bump here at 2.5, you can add a little bit more clarity in that main clarity range of a voice. So I'll do something like that. And again, we already put on the high pass filter, but sometimes I will just reinforce it with a small low cut there. Again, just to make the vocal a little bit more clear. A three band EQ setting, something like this would be really common for a vocal recording for a podcast. Again, don't go super aggressive with EQ, less is more. If you can't hear the difference, then just leave it flat, keep things nice and simple. But sometimes you do wanna modify those a little bit. The effects is here. If you are doing a singing or performance, a lot of people have been doing um, vocal performances on Zoom calls or that type of thing. So you can turn up the effects send here. You can turn your effects on and, and increase the, the level. level. And, and you, you should, should notice, notice here that you are hearing this effect 24, which is the pitch change. And then you have the parameter here where you can modify how that pitch change sounds. So that's one option for you there. You can turn that back off. Pan is whether or not it's going left or right. If you only have two microphones connected to this audio mixer and you want to record them separately, then I would pan the first channel left and the second channel right, and then both channels coming out of this audio mixer, the left and right of the main stereo mix, will be sent to your audio software separately so you can mix them after the fact as well. Then again, we do have that level knob at the very end for fine tuning. You can use this once you already have the gain set up to your liking, where you are trying to maintain that level around zero dB or so on the audio mixer. So like I said, that is the first channel strip on this audio mixer. If you do have other microphones, you would just do the same process all the way down the audio mixer for your other inputs as well. Now, you will notice that we did not use the cloud lifter that we have here. You can see here that we're only at about 75% on the gain. And for me, I don't really like using a cloud lifter or anything like that unless you are pushing 90, 95, or 100% on the gain. So for me, with our testing before and after, we haven't found a big difference either way in terms of background noise level with the Shure MV7 microphone and the cloud lifter. We do have a separate video on that where we tested it specifically, and I just don't think that it's necessary. A lot of people do have the question, do I need a cloud lifter with this microphone? I don't think that you do. I think the sensitivity on this microphone is set up in such a way that you do not need any outboard equipment like an inline preamp. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you've seen in this video, we do have links down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.